What's going on guys? It's Mojo from, well, actually, I was about to do my regular, my uh, Clash of Clans channel intro. So, what's going on guys? It's Mojo, and today we are playing some Boom Beach. So, actually, I'm not really going to be playing. We're just doing an operation recap, uh, showing you the status of my uh, task force that I started basically when the game came out. However, we just, uh, very recently reformed into this a uh, new 25 member task force because we started as a 50 member and you can't shrink so we disbanded that 50 member task force uh, created the 25 member with only the like top 25 contributing members and then sent the other ones if they even wanted to stay in the task force system if they were active uh, we sent them over to a feeder that's called sanctioned 2 so I'll let you guys see real quick um, it's only, it's actually, um, these two accounts, Mojo SN and Lieutenant Obvious, are actually, um, my, this is my second account, and this is Captain Obvious's second account, who's in the main task force, and then ZYZZ, um, he's just sitting in there for a little bit, uh, he's gonna come back up to the new task, or the main task force, I think, soon. We do have about three spots that will be opening up by, uh the intel reset which is saturday i think saturday evening um but anyway here's my task force so 30 intel a week is a minimum and then other stuff is basically just like general rules that most task forces should have so um i'm gonna be recapping this operation assuming yeah okay i can still see the battle so we used to always do Operation Hacksaw in the 50 member task force because we struggled struggled uh, getting enough intel to do upper lip consistently even though we could beat upper lip pretty easily. Um, so that was another, that was one of the reasons we switched over to a 25 member task force. We couldn't keep the 50 member roster filled with all active members. So we moved to this 25 member uh, task force. So first of all, oh, hell, what? Why can't I? Well, I wanted to show you player's attack because he's like a phenomenal warrior attacker. Let's see if I can... What? Why can't I... Does it do that on here too? No, because it shows all my... Alright, well, that really sucks because seriously, Brian and player are our two strongest warrior attackers. So we've got player here. Shout out to him. He's new, new to the force. Grabs a lot of intel and executes phenomenal attacks i guess you'll have to wait till my next operation recap to see that but brian is also an amazing warrior attacker he's sitting low in vp so he doesn't get attacked so it kind of sucks that he doesn't get a lot of intel for us but um let's go ahead and just get into the attacks um i think my attack this operation was pretty bad oh wait no no, no. this was the one where i finished an operation i usually use warriors try to make things easier for the hookah players but uh this time uh, I think this was our first operation having player in the force, and he just obliterated the last. So I was actually the next person to attack it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show you my attack first. I am rocking the heavy Zuka or Hookah. Uh, oh yeah, I started off by barraging that rocket launcher, took it out um, because player had weakened it. These were all rocket launchers back here. So uh, seven rocket launchers are down. I'm going to be using Heavy Zooka, use a couple smoke to keep him safe. Um, wasn't really sure if I needed that second smoke, but it, I think it was the safer call. So uh, fast forward a little bit here, otherwise it'll be a really long video. Let me grab some water. But anyway, I don't have my headset on today because I think when I record live with that, it has to be connected to my computer. And it like just takes even more of my RAM and sometimes it makes the face cam lag I think hopefully the face cam will be in this video uh, no promises a little bit sloppy smoke right there as you can see some of my zooks got taken out uh, and a lot of them got very weakened although getting weakened in operations isn't too big of a deal with zookas because the only thing that uh, won't take them out in one shot is gonna be um, those machine guns and then flamethrowers will like take them out uh, like really quick but like steadily 
So um, basically just gonna really waste away at this base here. My heavies are pretty strong. Uh, they lasted a, a decent amount of time, but my Zookas are just going to work on this core here. So the last went down, I think that was the second hardest of the second hardest of the four bases. Um, I don't really remember to be honest. That actually might have been the hardest, which actually was hard, but um, all right, so we'll go with uh, bloatware. Um, all right, so Captain Obvious is actually, um, he kind of alternates between the Hookah and the Warriors. Uh, he's been making huge progress. He's a new officer too, so shout out to him. Uh, pretty decent run there. Maybe um, the first smoke could have been a little bit closer to the um, machine gun so that there wasn't that gap there, but his Warriors barely even got hurt. So really uh, not, a, not a bad run at all. Um, He's going to shock the shock launcher and the flamethrowers because the flamethrowers will do work against warriors in operations. Then he reflares to that rocket launcher, so his job was done very well. Um, maybe one tip that um, I've attacked bloatware with those three rocket launchers in the same spot. One tip would be that I um, would go for that rocket launcher that's right on the play again symbol, the very left one, uh, so that your warriors naturally move to the other two a little bit more so that you don't have to reflare. But sometimes you would still have to reflare because warriors would be dumb and go to that flamethrower up to the top or something like that. Um, but anyway, that's my advice there. Still a great attack. Got the job done. No complaints whatsoever. So now we will go to Hacksaw. Um, that was Bloatware. And then we'll go to the finishing attack of Bloatware. So we'll just... Um, S2 went ahead and barraged, took out the shock launcher, um, gets a good angle here by going from the bottom. The flamethrower does work on heavies, but not too much. Uh, they still survived enough to tank the rocket launchers, which really didn't even matter. He could have done it with just a few boats of Zookas or all Zookas, uh, because they would have outranged the flamethrower and then also outranged the rocket launchers that were up here on the top. Um, but anyway, great raid by S2, um, so shout out to S2 for that. So we've got, Larry's going to destroy Smog City, let's see, Hyperlight. Alright, so a couple warrior attacks, don't really remember how exactly these went. Hyperlight is uh, a great attacker, um, but sometimes he doesn't have a lot of gunboat energy. He gets really unlucky with his statues. And also he had to use a lot here uh, taking out the boom mine so that future attackers would have an easier time. So he's going to flare to the cannon. Great move. Um, maybe, actually, no, that was, a, that was a really good run. Only thing could have been that uh, he got there a little faster so that his smokes didn't wear out. But still got that rocket launcher. And amongst those machine guns, like that's that's a pretty good attack. Machine guns do work on warriors, especially when they're up close. Um, so now we are moving on uh, to Larry, who, big shout out to Larry. He's one of the new, a newer officer, a couple weeks uh, of being an officer. He's, he's taken so much stress off my job as the leader. It makes it so easy to just to lead a task force when you can sometimes log offline. It's, he does a great job, so does uh, Northarg and Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious is a very new officer, still learning the ropes a little bit, but I think he's basically got it. Um, I really love being able to log off and just trust that everything will run smoothly because one of our officers basically always on. Like, very seldom are we not, um, especially since we have three time zones for Four, I think time zones represented with our officers um, so really and I'm, I'm seriously online like 10 hours a day but anyway here's Larry's raid let's go ahead and fast forward it um, he prog pro progresses very fast in the game uh, he's gonna go ahead and take out that boom cannon and reflare and eventually his zookas will take out the core so you can see it in the uh, the log that he did destroy it so I'm not cheeking you guys out or anything already showed you my attack and then uh, Narthar is actually a a one of our top warrior attackers as well even though he gets a little unlucky with statues 
But I'll go ahead and show you his hookah attack. As you can see, his zookas are only level 11, and he's like a level 40 something. So clearly, hookah is not his main strategy. But he's gonna go ahead and flare over here to get a decent position. Um, we basically wiped this this operation clean. We only used 14 attacks. So if you guys are looking for a task force and you are level at least 30 or above, go ahead and check us out. If you're not. Uh, check out the feeder sanctioned too. Uh, give me a comment down below if you are interested. That way I can open up a spot um, in the force. We would love to have you, especially if you can grab a lot of intel and uh, you're really active because we are a very active task force right now. Sadly, um, it doesn't look like it because for some reason my like chat notifications aren't coming up and I'm not going to open up because it's just going to be like a lot of chat about the operation. But um, also, as you can see, we took down upper lip right after that hacksaw, and we're well on our way right now. Um, we've got 13 attacks left, and I know it looks like we, we've got three bases left. But um, on Atlas, once these boom cannons go down, the base is basically done. Shock launchers don't do much damage, so if you just let the heavies tank them or just take them out, um, definitely not a worry there. Uh, and then crunch I think is like super easy to go down now Because um, player just came from the back and wrecked this base So basically any like lower level attacker with like heavy Zuko or all Zookas can just flank around this way And come down in on like the flamethrower and then hit the core So that'll be one attack left for that one and then wallop is basically easy to do now too we've got we could use a ruka attack here to take up the cannon sniper towers and probably this boom cannon and then this was actually one of the easier bases as you can see it's worth less force points but then after these are taken out um oh like a medium hookah attack will finish it really easily we've already used most of our lower level attacks too we've used our lower level attacks and then our warrior attacks so we're in really good shape here. Uh, we will finish this op. I'm 100% sure of it. Soon we'll be moving to Powder Keg whenever we can get enough intel for it. So, like I said earlier, if you guys get a lot of intel, make sure you join the task force sanctioned. Um, the code will be in the description of this video, but I'll show it to you guys one more time. It is hashtag C8V28GC. Used to have my old one memorized. Now I have to memorize this one. Uh, but... You know, we've only been in this force for, this is our, well, I guess you could see it's our fourth operation. We've done Hacksaw twice and uh, Upper Lip, this is the second time doing Upper Lip. So I think we'll be consistently doing Upper Lip from now on. Uh, and maybe Powder Keg on Dr. Terror Days when we get more intel and people are boosting statues and stuff. But uh, like I said, join us at Sanction. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day and peace out.